Hey, it's Matt Cox, and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about a bunch of different things. We're gonna talk about credit, we're gonna talk about collections and how to get rid of them, and we're gonna talk about whether you should actually claim bankruptcy or not um, if you do have collections. And that's pretty much it. So do me a favor, if you like the video, I need you to subscribe to my channel, I need you to share the video, I need you to like the video, and I need you to leave a comment for the algorithm. And let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about credit right now and how to build credit and more importantly, how to fix your credit. I'm gonna give a cursory overview of how to fix your credit, which is actually not that difficult to do. But if it doesn't work out, I've got a sure fire way to help you out and give you somebody that you can contact to try and work out whatever issues you have. It's a guy I work with by the name of David. But you can really do it on your own. Look, it, it's it's if you've watched any of my other videos, you can see that I walked out of the halfway house with, with a 750 plus credit score. It's not that difficult. So if you have no credit, it's not that hard. Uh, give me one minute and I'll explain. If you have no credit at all and you're trying to build credit, essentially you have to create credit from scratch. And that's hard to do with no credit. I mean, it's, you know, it's putting the, the cart before the horse. But what you can typically do is you go online, you apply for some credit cards, you're going to get turned down. Most credit card companies are looking for, for a, a few different underwriting guidelines to determine whether or not they're going to give you a credit card. But more than that, they're looking to see that you have proven a proven track record. If you don't have any credit, you have no proven track record. So it doesn't matter if you're making $300,000 a year, you've been on your job for 10 years and you know, you, you've, you've, you've got more than enough, uh, more than enough income to make the payments. They want to make sure that you've you can do it or that you will do it. It's not that you can't, it's will you. The way to do that is to get some secured credit cards. I mean, look, there's lots of things you could, you could, the easiest thing, let me put it this way. The easiest thing is to get secured credit cards. Now, look, you could, you could always go to some, you could always go to a car dealership and put down 20% and show them your pay stubs and, and, and then, basically get a car loan. But look, if you're just trying to build credit so you don't end up with a 22% interest rate, what you want to do is for a car loan, I'm saying, you want to go ahead and get secured credit cards. And what a secured credit card is when, let's say you apply for credit with uh, Bank of America, you go to Bank of America and online and you apply for one of their credit cards, they're going to turn you down because you have no credit. So, but they are going to offer you a secured credit card, which you have to put down a minimum of, I believe it's two or $300. And so let's say you give them $300 and they'll send you a secured credit card. Nobody knows uh, when they pull your credit that you have a secured credit card. All they see is that you have a credit balance or a credit limit of $300 with Bank of America. That's all they know. Uh, what, you're, what you're looking to do is get at a minimum three trade lines. You don't want 50 trade lines. You want like three or four trade lines. It's a decent credit profile to have three trade lines. You don't want to have less than that. Go to Bank of America and get a secure credit card for 300 bucks. You can apply to Capital One, get one for 300 bucks. You can go to, uh, I think it's Citigroup or Citibank, get one for, there's, there's several out there. Uh, First Premier Bank, I think, has one. There's several out there that have a secure credit card. So you put $400 down on one, $400 on another, $300 on another one. Don't ever, don't go above your a balance of 30% of whatever is available to you. So you have a $300 uh, high balance because you give them three and a bucks. You don't want to go over like a hundred bucks. So you keep around, you go up to around a hundred or so and then try and pay it down or almost off every single month six months, you should have over 700 credit scores. I've already done this. I've done this many, many times. Listen, I used to do it with homeless people all the time. I would survey homeless people and then I would apply for their uh, social, social security cards, birth certificates. I'd register a name, uh, vote in their name. And then I'd go to a state where they'd never had an ID. I'd get a driver's license in their name. I'd order three secured credit cards in their name. And then I just make the payment. Six months later, they'd have 700 credit scores. I could buy houses in their name. I have a driver's license in their name. 
Uh, I've got perfect credit in their name. I mean, I'm, I'm more, I appear to be, I'm not, but I appear to be a more of a, a decent, productive citizen than they certainly did. And I would do all kinds of stuff. But here's the, the thing though, and this is the issue that probably I, I think most people are going to watch the video for is, you know, what if you have bad credit? Uh, I taught at, at Coleman, I taught the real estate class at Coleman, sorry, Coleman, Coleman Federal Prison. I was in federal prison, by the way, if nobody knows. I just got out about less than two years ago. While I was in federal prison, I taught the real estate class. I owned a mortgage company. So one of the things I did was I taught, a, I also taught a class or two on credit repair. And there was actually a credit repair course, which I also taught really only for a, a few different, um, only for a few uh, semesters, or I guess the, what do they call it, like quarters. Every a, a few quarters, I taught this class. Uh, people would come to me all the time and ask me to look at their credit reports <laughs> in federal prison. They would give me their credit reports with their social security numbers on, uh, dates of birth, everything. I don't know what these guys are thinking. It's just not the sharpest people in prison. So they would give me their reports and I'd look them over and then they'd ask me for help, of course. And then, you know, you charge, say, hey, look, I want two bags of coffee and a uh, you know, a, and a bag of creamer because, you know, they sell instant coffee in prison. As a matter of fact, I'll show you what they sell. I actually bought, brought a bag with me from prison, actually bought four or five bags with me from prison to the halfway house so I could have coffee immediately. Like, because, you know, in my mind, you know, being outside of prison, they wouldn't have coffee. I didn't know what they had in the halfway house. You know, you don't know. So look, it's, man, it, it's so, it, it's like a rock, but it's instant coffee. And this is what we drink, kefi. So if there's anybody who's been in prison, everybody gets kefi in prison. So, and, and then we would get, uh, we would get creamer. You know, you get, you also get powdered creamer, so. You know, you pay everything you, in prison you pay for with commissary, pretty much commissary or stamps. Back on topic. So I guys would say, hey, can you help me with my credit? And I'd say, sure. You know, luckily in, in, in prison, you don't have too many guys in there that have, you know, major problems. But what we would do is some guy would come up and they'd say, hey, Matt, I got a problem with my credit. And we'd order their an free annual credit report, which is also a pain because you got to do it all through the mail. Eventually, they end up with getting their, their credit report. And, which anybody can do. You can write to the to the credit reporting agencies. Uh, there's three of them, three major ones. You can report. You can write letters to them, and and they'll send you a free annual credit report. It doesn't have your credit score on it. You have to pay for that. And anyway, we'd get their credit report, and we'd see what was on it. And a lot of these guys would have like phone bills because you have to understand they would get yanked up. Like the, the FBI comes in and they arrest you, or the Secret Service, or whoever they come and arrest you. They don't give you a chance to pay off uh, pay off your electric bill, or that's the least of your concern. You know, your car payment uh, to your Mercedes or Ford, you know, Mustang or whatever. That's a little. That's the last thing you're concerned about if you're in federal. If you just got arrested on some indictment, so these guys, all their credit goes bad almost immediately. And what we would do is, <laughs> this is horrible. What we would do is we would write the we first. Of course, you dispute it. You write a, dis a dispute letter saying, hey, this isn't me. Like, I don't know what this is. Uh, you know, what is this? And they come back and they go, oh, now typically, a lot of times you say, look, this isn't me. I want it taken off my credit report. They have about 14 days to respond. So about 14 business days later, they'll send you a letter saying, hey, uh, you okay, we removed it. And so a lot of times you'd be shocked how many times you'll have a $20,000 uh, repo and They'll remove it sometimes. Now, other times, it could be a $400. It just, there's really no rhyme or reason. You have to think, it could be a $400 uh, cell phone bill. And hold on, somebody's, somebody's actually calling me while I'm doing a video. It stopped the, uh, the video. So Colby, you have to connect these two videos together. I don't care if you put this part in or not. I think it's fine. People call. I'm on my cell phone. I'm in my kitchen. Someone call. Whatever. All right. 
I don't even know where I was. All right, so they would, they we, first you, we would send off a letter saying, this is not our, our this is not my, th this is not, this is not something I recognize. It's not my car. It's not my cell phone bill. And sometimes they just take it right off. It wouldn't matter if it was a $20,000 repo or a $400 uh, uh, cell phone bill, but sometimes they just, they just remove both of them and it wouldn't matter. Other times they would remove a 20 or $30,000 repo on your car and then they would argue with you about a $500 electric bill or a sell bill or it was just, there was no rhyme or reason. I think part of that is because you have to imagine that the people that are, that are actually working at the, at the, the credit bureaus, they, you know, th these are people making, you know, a little bit more than maybe minimum wage or minimum wage or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what they might be working for. Who knows what they work for? Hold on. Sometimes they would remove it. Sometimes they wouldn't remove it. The point is, is that, you know, if they don't remove it, then you come back and you have to say, hey, listen, you send another letter saying, okay, well, you're saying this is me. I don't recognize this. I want proof that this is me. I don't, I, there's just no way this could possibly be me. And we would mail these letters off and they'd come back. Sometimes They have 14 days to come back. Now, if they didn't come back with within 14 days of giving you proof that it's you, that it's actually you, and that, that would mean some, that would mean a copy of the copy of the application, a copy of the check, a copy of your driver's license, copy of a application that you filled out and signed, you know, that, that sort of thing. And you have to understand that this is a credit bureau. They're having to track this down. They have to, they have to then turn around and go to the collection agency and the collection agency has to send in this stuff. It's a whole lot of stuff to, to, to do for a $400, uh, electric bill, you know, and, and a lot of times they just won't, they won't do it. So after 14 days, you write a letter back saying, listen, I requested this on this day. You haven't responded. I want it taken off my credit. They have 14 days to respond to you to say, okay, we took it off your credit. That's it. Now, if they don't, you can, of course, you can threaten them. And, and I forget the name is the consumer credit council, consumer credit agency. I forget what the name of the, the agency is, but there's actually, there's an agency you can then threaten to, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead, you know, I'm going to contact them and tell them, you, look, they're going to take it off, but let's say they don't take it off. Now, if they didn't take it off when I was in prison, here's what you, what we would do. We'd file a, a, an identity theft report and get a response showing we'd filed the identity theft report. Then we would go to the counselor and get the counselor to write a letter saying, how long have, have I been incarcerated? And the counselor would write this letter from the bureau saying, hey, this person has been incarcerated for, you know, since, you know, for five years. Well, of course, if all the bad credit was typically was just after he'd been, you know, he'd been arrested. So the guy, so roughly five years ago is also, you know, he got arrested and then all of a sudden he's got all this bad credit. And that makes sense. So we, what we would do is we we'd change the letter. I'd have the guys change the. I would have the guys change the letter, and we would change the letter to say that the guy had been arrested for ten years, and then we would take the the report that says uh, that says it, it was a stolen identity and it's been reported. And we'd show the letters and then we'd show the letter from the counselor and, ex and write a letter to the credit bureau and say, look, I was arrested 10 years ago, as you can see per this letter. And um, five years ago, someone stole my identity and used my credit. And now I have all this bad stuff on my credit. And I just found out about it and I filed a report saying that my identity was stolen five years ago. Now, of course, Nobody's looking into it. You can't, law enforcement's not looking into your credit being stolen because basically if you're an inmate, your law enforcement doesn't care what happens to you. So they're not looking into anything. Secondly, nobody at the credit bureau who's making minimum wage is calling your counselor and your counselor's not going to give them any information anyway if the counselor even answers the phone, which they're not going to. Point is, those letters right there would wipe everything off your credit. And that would be great. Now, obviously you can't do that. And I wouldn't suggest you do that because clearly that's, you know, there's, that's illegal, you know? Well, I don't know if it's illegal. Honestly, I'm not sure what even applies to an inmate that we did anything illegal because we're inmates and 
Hell, inmates stab and kill each other and the Bureau gives them shots. Like you can stab another inmate. You can beat another inmate to a pulp, stab him, and you end up with like 90 days in the, in the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> they catch guys. I remember there was a guy that they caught him with like guys who get caught in prison with um, with heroin, with, uh, you know, they're like selling heroin. They're selling all kinds of drugs in prison. They get caught with all kinds of stuff and they get a shot. They don't get new charges. They don't get charged with running a conspiracy or running a. Now, some people do, but 99% of the time they just don't because bring, they have to bring the FBI in to the federal prison. So the FBI comes in and then has to do a whole, they have to do a whole investigation within the prison about some guy who's moving heroin. And they just like, it's like, it's ridiculous. And he's selling, this is an inmate selling to other inmates. Give him a shot. They give him a shot. He goes to, goes to the shoe for 90 days or six months at the most. And he loses his commissary privileges for a year. And he uses, loses his phone for a year or maybe visitation for six months. And that's it. Where if he was outside and caught on a on a conspiracy for selling heroin, he'd get he'd probably get five or ten years. Who knows? Anyway, you obviously can't do the you, the counselor thing. Hey, I'm in prison. This wasn't me. I couldn't have done these things. I've been in prison for ten years. You can't do that out here right, on the street. What you can do though is you can go through the whole process of of writing these letters to the credit bureaus. Look, it takes time. Okay, it doesn't even have to be a form letter. You don't even have to put in the form letter. Like you'll have all these guys who, oh, you have to say under statute this and under this. And you don't need all that. You just have to write the letter. Uh, they have to abide by that. They don't expect you to know all this. But here's the thing, everything you do, it's 14 days, 14 days. And it's just, I don't know what this is. It's not mine. Let's get rid of this. Can you, then it, then it becomes, can you prove it? Then if they can prove it, you can end up saying, you know, you can end up making the argument that you don't, you don't know what this is. You're not sure. Look, the fact is if it's yours, well then pay it. Say it's, oh yeah, I did wreck it. Oh yeah. You know what? That is mine. I feel bad about that. Let me go ahead and pay it now, you know, or you can, well, anyway, let's move, move aside. Let's, we're assuming this is not yours. And, and nobody's, you know, nobody's looking into any, anything. Okay. This is, this is, this is, you know, hundreds of people in cubicles answering letters and emails at the credit bureaus. And all these people have tons of money. And so you're trying to clean up your credit, you know, and you write these letters and they have to respond and eventually they get tired. Now, if they don't get tired, what you can do, you can actually go to like legal zoom uh, dot com and you can you can file a motion or file a, an actual lawsuit you don't have to file the lawsuit you just have to write up the lawsuit so you actually all you have to do is go through and answer the questions that you're trying to sue the credit bureau whatever equifax or experian or transunion whoever whichever one it is who won't respond or all three of them you fill out the form for each one you you fill out a, a a lawsuit, a federal lawsuit, not a state lawsuit, but you're going to file a federal lawsuit. You're never going to file it. So don't, don't think, oh, I don't want to file a lawsuit. You're not filing the lawsuit. You're filling out paperwork saying you're going to file the lawsuit, but you're not going to. You fill out the paper. This and lawyers do this all the time. You fill out a basic lawsuit. It's going to be, you know, it, look, it's going to be seven or eight pages at most. It might be four pages. You're going to fill out the form saying, look, this is not me or I want this removed. I don't recognize this for whatever reason. This is not this is a, a collection on on my on my credit report. It's not me. I don't know who it is. My identity was stolen or you know what? I just don't want to pay it or it's been four, five years or the car broke down. Whatever your reason is it needs to be reasonable. But whatever the reason is, you fill out the you fill out a, a lawsuit, a moat you you're going to file a motion in federal court and you make a copy of it. And, and look, it, it, it doesn't have to be eloquent. OK, the people that are reading these things aren't eloquent. OK, nobody cares. They just don't want it's a, it becomes a pain. You just want to be a pain to them. So then you make a copy of it and you mail it to them with a letter saying, look, if this isn't removed, I'm filing this in federal court. The, the, they'll go ahead and they'll they'll just remove it because they're like, dude, 
do we really want to fight to keep a $11,000 collection that's six years old or five years old or two years old or, you know, whatever it is. Six, well, I guess after seven years, it falls off. But so a six-year-old collection for 11 grand, do we want to keep this on his credit? Do we want to spend 30 grand or 20 grand defending a lawsuit against this guy? He's already written up the motion. He just has to file it. And he's serious. He hasn't gone away. And that's the whole thing. It's like most things. It's wearing them down. Eventually, they will remove it from your credit. And you'd be shocked what I've gotten removed off people's credit. Now, granted, I haven't always done it the right way. Uh, I, the, the point is, it look, 14 days, 14 days, 14, you just hammer them, hammer them, hammer them. And don't get discouraged. Don't see something that's like, oh, it's, it's a $40,000 collection. What am I going to do? It doesn't matter. I've seen them fight harder for a $400 cell phone bill than for a $25,000 repo. So it, there's no rhyme or reason. You may end up getting the one, the, the one minimum wage employee that works at the at, at, at Equifax that decides he's going to, he's going to make this right. He's going to, I'm going to make, I know it's this guy owes the money and I'm going to make sure he, we're not taking it off his credit report. What are you doing, bro? Look, you don't even have to worry about that because the turnover is so high, he won't be there in three months. Just hammer away, hammer away. And it doesn't matter. Eventually when you file, send in that lawsuit and he has to go to a supervisor, look, they're talking about filing a lawsuit. The supervisor is going to say, how much time have you wasted on this? Take it off. For the first time in the last five or 10, well, shoot, really, last 10 or 15, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, in the last 10 years, as far as the credit bureaus are concerned, everything has shifted into your favor, into the consumer's favor. Listen, 20 years ago, it was, it was almost impossible to get them to take stuff off. Sometimes they'd take it off and then re and put it back on six months later. It was horrible. Now they're taking stuff off left and right because they know they're bullies. And, and you know, things have shifted. All right, uh, here's the thing. Let's say you have some issues. Say for some reason, it, you don't, look, maybe you don't even want to fill out the paperwork. You don't want to even want to deal with it. If you don't want to deal with it, I work with a guy named David. I'm going to leave David's information in the description. Uh, I'm going to leave a way to contact him. Probably his phone. I got to get his phone number. I'll get his phone number. I got I to gotta check and see if he'll let me put his phone number in the description. So I'll give you his, uh, at least his email and website, phone number. I'll give you a bunch of information on him in the description. And you just contact him directly. And he'll answer a lot of questions and stuff if, if you want. And as far as bankruptcy is concerned, and, and that's really one of the things I wanted, wanted to discuss was bankruptcy. Uh, there's no reason to claim bankruptcy, all right? It, unless you've got some collection that's attaching to your, obviously it's, 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 it's in um, public records and it's attached to your name and it's attaching to all of your, your properties and that sort of thing. And that's what's gonna happen is it's attached to your name and public records and you buy a house. Here's the main issue with bankruptcy. For most people, bank for make, most people, collections just don't mean that much. It's other than having bad credit. A lot of people will think, oh, uh, I've got $30,000 worth of credit card debt and, and then I'm going under, or I haven't paid on, uh, it's in collection. The, the, these collection companies are calling me and whatever. I'm gonna claim bankruptcy. There's really no need to claim bankruptcy nowadays. Unless you've got some kind of a judgment or you know a judgment uh, that that's attached to you, that's attached to your property, uh, you know, thing titled, things that are titled that are in your name, that are in public records that can be can be um, encumbranced by an actual lien of some kind. Unless you own multiple houses and you've got judgments that are attached to you and to and to these properties then there's really no reason to claim bankruptcy. Most things you can get off just by hammering away at the credit bureaus and you can get them to take the stuff off. Like if you had a $30,000 worth of credit card debt that went into collections a year ago and you're thinking about claiming bankruptcy, that's ridiculous.
Honestly, you can really just hammer them over and over again and get it taken off. Bankruptcy is an extremely invasive procedure to go through. They wanna look at all of your uh, all of your bank statements and your taxes. And it, it it's, it's just, it's an extremely difficult, pro, uh, difficult thing or, 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 you know, to, to go through it's, it's, it's hard and it's tough. And, and then they'll put you on like a payment plan. You know, now you've got the government tell, and listen, the government, you're thinking, Oh no, 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 I have to have Netflix. <laughs> no, you don't. No, no, I have to have the, well, wait, well, you know, I typically go out to eat twice a week. So what, what do you say? Well, you're not going out to eat twice a week now. Oh, well, I've got two cars. You guys can survive on one. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to go through bankruptcy. It's rough. It's no joke. Bankruptcy is not, not, not a joke. So your better bet is just to hammer away at the, at the, um, credit bureaus and get them to take off all the collections. That's really it. It look, David can go over all this with you. Um, that's, I, I think, I think. I think what you need to do is is pull your credit and go from there. That's the your best bet. I'm going to do some other videos also on how to qualify for auto loans, how to qualify for uh, credit cards, how to qualify for personal loans, business loans. So I'm going to do some videos like that. I'm going to start trying to trying to weave them into my dynamic. Yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. So basically that's fixing your credit. You'd be shocked. All right, if you liked the video, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, share the video, and leave a comment for the algorithm because I need that. And I need you to share the video. And I appreciate it. See ya. My coffee's cold. It's fine. I can I'll deal with it.